So even if you don't do a lot of electrical work around the house, you should be familiar with ground fault current interrupt or more commonly called GFCI outlets. Why you wanna be familiar with these is because they're the most common source of service call for electricians. So you can save yourself some time and money if you just have a little information. I'll show you three different things that you probably don't know about GFCI outlets. But before we jump into that, I'm gonna show you a quick example of only take about a minute to swap out a GFCI outlet that's failed in my bathroom. So we'll make sure power is off to the GFCI and I'll take off the faceplate here and also score around the faceplate making sure I don't damage the drywall or paint. Confirming no power with my non-contact voltage tester then I'll take out the two mounting screws and confirm again that there's no power on the hot side. Then I'll just remove the black hot side then the white neutral and snip off my ground. Here is my new GFCI and all I have to do is I'm just gonna trim up the copper on the hot side to more appropriately fit the back wire of this Leviton GFCI. Then I'll connect the neutral and finally connect the ground. Then fold, not push and cram the wires back, but fold them back into the box, screwing back in the two mounting screws and then making sure everything is aligned before putting on the faceplate. Then I'll put the face plate back on and a good touch when you're tightening this up, don't tighten it too tight or you'll crack the face plate, but just put your screws vertical or horizontal consistently. Then we'll turn the power back on and press the reset button, confirming that it holds a reset and our install is correct. So the first point that you might not be aware of when it comes to GFCI is demonstrated on all three of these different models. Now this is an older one I just swapped out because the reset button was missing. And this is made by Legrand. This one's an older Leviton. And then this one is a newer GE model, but they all call out the same thing on the face here. And that is test monthly. You see it here, much smaller text, test monthly, and even on the newest one, test monthly. So you can guess it, it is that you are supposed to be testing your GFCI outlets in your house monthly. Now, what is a test? Well, it's very easy. It is just that. You would press the test button that would trip the GFCI and turn off power to that outlet. And then you should be able to press reset and it should hold a reset, turning back on the power and keeping power on to that outlet. So that's all you need to do to check the functionality and give you peace of mind that your GFCIs are working correctly. The second point is just the sheer complexity of a GFCI outlet compared to a standard commercial grade outlet are night and day. Now, even from the outside looks pretty complex, uh, but really looking internally, that's where you're gonna appreciate the differences. So if we look internally to that commercial grade Legrand 15 amp outlet, you can see really it's just made up of the terminals themselves. You would have the gold terminals here representing the hot side of your outlet, top and bottom. You would have your silver terminals here representing the side that ties to neutral. And then we have the ground slots here, top and bottom. Now this is my favorite commercial grade and that's comparing Leviton, Eaton, Legrand, and Hubble. This is, I think, bang for the buck, the best one you can get. Now let's compare that and open up this older GFCI to show you just the sheer complexity difference. So from the top, you start to see some of the complexity and we can remove the test button. You do see the contacts here on both sides and that is how you can turn on and off the power. And then looking in the back, you actually see there is a lot more going on. So you still have all the contacts similar to what you had on the commercial grade, but now you have literally the guts here, and that's really the ground fault current interrupt capability, which is right here, where it can detect the difference between a hot and neutral side. 
once it reaches a difference of five milliamps, then it will trip and it will release the contact so it will cut power, avoiding any injury for whatever had touched the hot side. So that should give you a little different appreciation for why the GFCIs cost so much and also why they fail. And then the third point is some of the newer GFCIs have a small LED. With this GE, it's a little confusing because it actually has a nightlight here in the middle. It has a light sensor up top to turn that nightlight on and off. And then there is the small LED status indicator which is part of a feature that's called self-testing that helps to indicate the serviceable life of a GFCI. So you just saw all the complexity here within these outlets. That complexity equals a shorter life or shorter serviceable life of about 10 to 15 years. Now, sometimes that's hard to detect on the older ones and you do not have that self-testing built in internally and a status indicator that either will turn green when the GFCI is powered on and operating as expected, it won't be on at all when the power is cut to that circuit, or it will be red when it's detected an issue with a few different components, one of those being an internal solenoid. So when it is red, you can try to test it and reset, go through a normal resetting cycle and see if you can get the green LED indicator back. If not, if it stays red, that does indicate that your GFCI needs to be changed because it has reached the end of serviceable life. Now with the age of GFCIs now, there's many of these just like the one I showed you earlier, whether they're failing mechanically like this one or the internals are wearing out. So something to be aware of and make sure you're monitoring around your house. So hopefully now you have a little better understanding of GFCI outlets. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. And there's many locations around your house where GFCIs should be installed, but it does depend on your local electrical code. Pretty much universally, sinks, tubs, and showers, any outlet or receptacle within six feet of a sink, tub, shower, or a water source need to be either GFCI or protected by GFCI. Now, when it comes to being quote unquote protected by GFCI, that's when you need to start having a better understanding of line versus load. So a GFCI outlet can provide protection to other standard outlets downstream, but you need to understand line and load and check out this video right here and we'll dive much deeper into that to give you a better understanding and make sure that you're installing your GFCIs correctly around your house. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.